two. Yeah, wait, <laughs> I think that's the birthday song. <laughs> How's and the happy right new year the song gate, go? The first, the first episode of the year, and you fuck it up. <laughs> I mean, literally, we are. Happy oh, I don't know, twelve Year's seconds into to it. You. That's not how it happy goes. Happy New Year's to you. Happy New Year, Pigs Pod listeners. Happy New Year to you. There you go. You like that? I'm here all week. And a whole week of resolutions until you go back to your old self. <laughs> I, I refuse to make a resolu- resolution this year. I was like, fuck that. Why, why, wait, why waste a whole week? Why, why, yeah, exactly. Why have the whole I, yeah, first can... week of 2015 suck ass? Yeah, why do I want to spend the first week of 2015 not drinking soda, not smoking, and trying to eat healthy? Like, why, why would I do that? Like, what's the point? I don't know. Now you're making me feel bad because I've been trying. <laughs> uh, been working out yeah right no i have i've done it every day so far i'm on, I'm I'm on day out. six of a 30-day challenge I, i'm working out right now i'm doing 12 ounce curls <laughs> oh well that's uh that's good for your masturbatory expeditions i guess yeah but this is left-handed so oh uh, well I've had a person tell me before that they do a left-handed because it feels like a stranger's doing it. I'm not that coordinated. Oh, you're just, you don't like stranger danger? No, nah, I just like I just throw myself out of rhythm and it just all goes to hell. It throws off your focus. You just keep hearing yeah. your mom in your head, stranger danger, stranger. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. Stop touching me. Stop it. <laughs> uh, I guess we figured it out. We cracked the case. Happy New Year. That's all you need to know. Stranger danger. Don't use the left hand. It's scary. Uh, no, really. Uh, we're recording this a few days into the year, and it's going to come out like a week into the year. So, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. Uh, I think we talked about it on the last episode, but I'm going to get this out of the way right now. Uh, God, please don't bring up Destiny. No. No, okay. no, no, no. I'm talking about Pig's Pod for a second. All the old episodes oh. are going to start disappearing. So if you really want to listen to the old audio, as we tried to figure out what the fuck audio was supposed to sound like, and that you're not supposed to run audio cables through a potato. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking cheese grater, but that works. Well, yeah, we we did use a cheese grater for that one, the one yeah. we did with Real Mystery. <laughs> yeah, that was a thing. I swear <laughs> I was on that episode. <laughs> I heard you you were like a ghostly encounter that came on just every now and then flo- flying by. <laughs> I was like, it was either uh, I was on the episode or Mystery was just talking to himself. Oh, I thought it was you. I thought you were in the background going, hey, <laughs> Canadian <laughs> ghost. <laughs> we should ask for a mystery if there's Canadian ghosts. Hey. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, since we're already on the Canadian kick, so ooh. I saw a uh, I saw a, a news article on on Facebook a couple of days ago that was like ten interesting facts about porn. Ooh! And do you know that the largest pornography company in the world is based in Canada? What? Yeah, no shit. Wait, wait, wait. I don't you know. Mean the, like I don't know. Th- what do you mean? Like web based porn, like your typical. You know, X hamster or X and XX, whatever your whatever your happy time is. The largest pornography company in the world is based in Canada. Like producers or like website yes. or servers. No, it, it's produced. Produ- production in the in Canada. They film it yeah. in Canada. Apparently. What? Yeah. I thought those. What you tell me? Yeah. I've been jerking it to Canadian chicks. It's, it appears to be like likely. Oh my! God. I feel so unpatriotic. This is not the way to start the year. Betraying my country, man. <laughs> You're not having enough freedom jerks. Oh man. No. I'm gonna start I'm gonna start uh specifying my Google searches. American <laughs> in quotes. Yeah, uh, they beat out Los Angeles. Wow. Yeah. So that's it, I I wondered what kind of jobs they had up there because it doesn't seem like much is going no offense, but uh, I don't I mean, do they make movies up there? I mean, that's a bi- you know, billion dollar industry here. I had this conversation with my wife, and the only thing that we can figure is, you know, AIDS and free health care. That's what's free up there. Yeah, exactly. What are they, how are they making money other than hockey? Hockey jerseys, hockey games, hockey nachos, 
I mean, that <laughs> that brings in the millions, but porn, jeez. Yeah, never saw that one coming. That's weird. I <laughs> never saw it coming. Ah, a. Yes, a. <laughs> See what I did there? Yeah, I saw what you did there. A. <laughs> I've been trying to work on my Canadian accent. I feel like we let you mystery still, down. Yeah, you'll still end up sounding Mexican. Yeah, we sound Mexican. I'm sorry. Sorry, mystery. Well, we'll try. Or or we'll just give up on Canadian altogether because they're, they're sluts, cute. They're into porn. It's naughty. It's not right. It's, 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 it's triple X. Triple X can't. What do you know? What company it is? <laughs> I'm afraid no, to ask. no. I, I've got my computer working just right to do this episode. I'm afraid to Google anything. Oh yeah, don't touch it. Don't don't push anything. Don't push escape. Huh? That's crazy. Well, there yeah. you go. There's your. Uh, well, that's not Fun a million dollar idea. Week. That's a million dollar company. We need to come up with a million dollar idea. Oh, anyways, well, uh, it's the New Year's episode. And we're here today. I feel like I feel like the way I started that I was like a president giving a speech at like a funeral. We're here today. <laughs> it's really sad. Yeah. Uh no, we're here today to talk about the best games of 2014. Uh I I don't know. Do you think we should stick to video games or games games or what? Mm, I say we well, let's let's try to let's try to touch all games. Ooh, yeah, let's touch yeah. all games in a Canadian sexual way. All right, we'll touch all games. Let's start with video games. Uh, best games of 2014. I'm I'm gonna throw out some. We're not gonna give you like a top five. We're just gonna throw out ones like an honorable mention list. Okay, yeah, ones mm-hmm. that we like. They don't yeah. have to be the best. They're the they're the pigs pod best. These are the. <laughs> <laughs> the, the pigs pen best pigs pod. There, there we go. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna throw one out there that you're gonna be surprised even came out in 2014 because it feels like so long ago. All right, shoot. Plants vs Zombies Garden Warfare. Oh my god, that game that that game deserves so many like. Oh, like, amazing! Su- it's it's awesome game. The only downside is, and I didn't realize this, but uh, our, our buddy Necro. He uh, he bought the game for his son for uh, for Christmas. Oh. You know that's a, it's an online game. Oh yeah, you can't you can't you can't play it offline. I did not know that. Oh yep 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 yep. Online purely. That I that is the one downfall. Other than that, perfect. Yeah, absolutely awesome. So fun. It, you don't even have to like Plants vs Zombies. It's a third person shooter, and if you like any shooters, you will like this. It's freaking amazing. And I'll be shocked if anyone listening to this hasn't played it. Uh, but Definitely an honorable mention, and it did come out in 2014, uh, February 2014. It, it feels like forever ago, but one of my favorite things about this game is they they didn't uh, they they didn't grab onto the teats and t- try to squeeze all the milk out of it. They never uh, jumped on board with microtransactions. Never, even though they had the perfect opportunity with all those cards and those card packs and shit, where you unlock characters and weapons and stuff. They, yeah, I never thought about that. Yeah, they never introduced microtransactions. They had a perfect system, and I guarantee people would have played or paid money uh, to unlock better cards and better zombies and stuff. But they they never did. They kept it free. But they did fire almost everyone that worked on the game about a couple. What? Of, yeah, a couple months after the studio got rid of a lot of people. So there is that. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, they, the I believe it was just the ones that worked on the third person shooter. I believe they're still working on other Plants vs Zombie stuff, and I don't know if they just straight fired them. I, I should probably look this up and know what the fuck I'm talking about before I just go off. But uh, as far as I heard, that's last not how I we remember, do here. no, we just we just wing it and guess. Uh, so as far as I guess, uh, I. <laughs> They they fired everyone like the three artists and everyone that worked on the the Garden Warfare game, and I don't I think like some of them moved to just other places within the company, or worked on different Plants vs Zombies stuff. But they pretty much shut down the studio that made it. They kept the game going, but just with minimal staff. So maybe that's why they never used microtransactions because it was soon after the game released. Like it was. 
shockingly fast, especially for how popular that game was for like a month. <laughs> I, yeah, I loved it. I, I do have to agree, though, that, that I have not played it in forever. So, yeah, it was really popular, and then it was nothing. Yeah, it went away. I don't. I can't even think what came about that made it go away. Uh, I don't know. What's what's one of your favorite games? Favorite <laughs> games of favorite games of 2014. Yeah, video games. We're on video games right now. Hmm. Let's see. <laughs> Destiny. Yeah. Fuck you. Um. <laughs> when did GTA come out? Did it come out in t- 2013? Was late, it 2013? Yeah, yeah that's it was right. late it was, 2013. Yeah, yeah you're right. Because Heist was supposed to come out in 2014. <laughs> Buzzing. Uh, you know, I don't really have like these amazing releases this year that, you know, I didn't, I never really, I mean, I didn't really get into Titanfall. And I think that know, was 2013 as well. Was it really? Yeah, late 2013 with the, because the man, Xbox what? One came out late 2013. And that was a release title with Yeah, that was their release title. You're right. That's how they sold most of the Xboxes. I think that's how they sold all their Xboxes. <laughs> yeah, 95% of them at least. Uh, I don't know. What what other big games came out in 2014? Oh, wow. Like, jog my memory. Uh, all right. Destiny. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you forgot about that one. Oh, I mean, Forgive me. It should be on the honorable mention list. Yeah, uh, we'll get wrong. to... We're, we're, uh, no, I I I did sit down. Q. I thought long and hard. I met, meditated about Destiny, and I came up with a few things, a, a couple that are wrong with Destiny. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna admit it later when we get to that. <laughs> I'm gonna admit it. Well, no, let's do it right now. I'll admit it right now. Okay, you know what's wrong with Destiny? What? That they are that they have to make it last. So all the shit that is on the disc and all the shit that they're bringing out in updates, uh, I have to wait for. <laughs> I think it'll have, I mean, as much as I like to harp on destiny, um, I think it's going to have a lot of longevity. I think that, Oh, well it, it that- will because they've, uh, somebody leaked it online and then I, destiny, I mean, destiny, eh, Bungie and IGN decided to officially announce it. Uh, so they've released all their information for the entire year for all the contact con. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> <I'm> struggling today. <laughs> all the content, the content, cute content, content packs that are coming out this year. Uh, there's four of them. There's one in March and then there's a big one. That's a, a, a huge update called Comet in September. And then there's two more that they haven't announced the date, but they said they were in 2015. So it so for like this whole year, I'm definitely gonna have something to play all all the way up to until Halo Five comes out. I definitely have Destiny to play because every time they release an update, they completely change the game, and it's like almost frustrating. Here's another bad part to the game. I'll admit this again. So you you're in there and you grind it out. It, it's like a lot of games that like it's not a first person shooter. It's like a I don't know what do you call that MMO? Uh, it's a it's an MMO. <laughs> yeah. So you have to grind and build up your gear and do all kinds of tasks and quests and shit, even though they don't call them quests, but kind of. Yeah, they're still quests. And then they update the game, and it fucking undoes a lot of your stuff, or it just puts out better shit, so then your shit sucks, and you're like, oh, dude, uh, Bungie, why you kick me in the balls right now? Why? Well, you know, in all honesty, they're they're not doing anything other than the way World of Warcraft does it, you know, they'll they'll release a new expansion, they'll they'll raise the level cap, and I mean, you look at look at how long the, the longevity of games like WoW, if as long as Bungie sticks to that that MMO style and with the releasing of new content and keeping people interested, the game will the, the game will do just fine. What 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 I want to see in long term is when you have these other big title releases like with Halo Five when it comes out. You know how well is Bun- or Destiny going to hold up against you know the, the people that are just like you? You're going to you you've already said it. You're going to sit and you're going to play you know Destiny until Halo Five comes out. The big question is how many people are going to continue to play Destiny? You know once Halo Five comes out, that's the big question. That because, I wonder if that's why they haven't announced those other two content 
packs for late 2015. I wonder if they're going to coincide it and try and time it around Halo 5 to just fucking punch Microsoft right in the gut. Just like, because they're already like kind of, kind of drilling them, hitting them a little left, lefty on the cheek. Kind of, they've already kind of knocked down Halo 5, uh, which we'll get to. We won't, we won't talk about it right now, but you know, they're already knocking them down. They knock fucking, Three four three knocked themselves down with Master Chief Collection. Uh, this yeah, they did. Uh, this game could have easily been on the top list, but no, it's uh, it's number one worst game of 2014. <laughs> I'll say it. Well, you know, I will have to respectfully disagree with you for the simple fact is you can't give it the the worst rating if you can't play it. No, I can give it the worst rating because <laughs> they released it like that, and it's still broken. It still yeah, doesn't work. No, I agree. I agree. It's and the reason I especially rate it the worst is because it 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 damn near ruined Halo for me. I'm not even kidding. And like I haven't even tried and played it again since that first uh, two weeks or so. I haven't even tried. I pretty much gave up on it. And I'm just sitting here playing Halo Four. Yep, I'd rather <laughs> play Halo Four. That works on a console that yeah. works 360. Yeah, but I mean it's. I don't know. I, I think that they may, they probably did shoot themselves in the foot. And then, you know, you, you throw in this whole thing about, you know, Xbox network being down and PS PlayStation network being down because of those fuckers. Uh, you know, that, that didn't help the situation. No, 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 no. And yeah, it, it, it did turn, it did think, make things really bad. So, uh, while, while we're on the subject, I'll tell you why Halo 5 Almost put the fucking nail in the coffin. The nail in the Halo coffin. I almost gave up on the entire franchise. Because Halo 5, day fucking one, the servers didn't work, Q. Fucking yeah. bullshit. Are you kidding me? Are you serious right now, 343? <laughs> That's your number one priority. You fucking go out on the street and hire random people, whatever, to just fucking... Throw together servers, spend a billion dollars, I'm not even joking, a billion dollars on new servers and hire hobos off of the street to just sit and put together new servers all day long. It, it should it should have worked flawlessly. It's ridiculous well, that were, they didn't learn from Master Chief Collection. There, there were connection issues with Halo 4 on release day. Now, granted, not to the extent of what these are, but there, you know, but there were still, there were still connection issues. Because I remember, you know, I... Fuck, I took a vacation day for the Halo 4 release, and uh, I had connections is- connection issues intermittently throughout the day. Yeah, but it wasn't so. to the fucking point where you couldn't play the game, which you no, can't on Master it's Chief true. or on Halo 5. was unplayable the first two or three days on Halo 5. You couldn't find any matches. But it was it's also in beta, so you got to... That's, yeah. that's the one reason I wanted to try it again. I gave it a chance. Uh, like Dumb and Dumber, I told 343, three and they were like, so you're telling me that there's a chance? <laughs> uh, I fucking, uh, Destiny's so good right now, and I'm so into it, and Halo disappoints me twice in a row like that. Uh, I almost I almost gave up on my love. Um, that's all right. That's, that's why I'm sitting and playing GTA V. Yeah, well, I didn't. I didn't give up on it. Halo is awesome. That'll be our next episode. We'll talk all about Halo 5. But for now, games of the year. I'll t- I'll, I remembered one from March. South Park, the Stick of Truth. Yeah, I never played it. What? Oh, my God. Fucking awesome game, dude. They finally uh, accomplished their goal, their, what they were envisioning of you literally being in a South Park episode. The entire game looks exactly like the graphics from a South Park episode. Well, that's not really that hard to accomplish. You wouldn't think, but for some reason it took them years of coding to get it right. But it's fucking awesome. Uh, it's another kind of like MMO. You got to upgrade your gear and up unlock all kinds of shit. And I, I put a lot of time into it. And then, I don't know, something pulled me away. Something pulled me away. Uh, I'm reading here Titanfall was 2014. So was it 2014? It might have been a January release. Well, it says March. Oh, well, maybe it was March. I don't know. I never played it. I know I know it was 2014 for the 360 because they were re-encoding and uh, porting over the version, but 
Huh. Yeah, maybe Des. I don't know. I mean, Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> maybe Titanfall was a 2014. Uh, yeah, 2000. Yeah, it was 2014. Yep. So, but uh, Titanfall again is one of those, just like South Park, just like. Plants vs. Zombies was freaking awesome for about a month, but then it lost longevity. Wow. Well, I think I think Titanfall lost its longevity with the Destiny beta. Yeah. That... I, I think that's kind of what did it in. I think that there was... It, it, you still had that whole like brand new console, first console in 10 years, and everybody's wanting to try stuff out and try different things, and then you know the super hype that is and was Destiny because they're still fucking hyping that game. My Taco Bell commercials still do it. <clears throat> I think Destiny worked because you fucking hated it first, bro. That game sucks until you level up. <laughs> like I hated well, that's, it. That's that's no different than any. That's no different than any MMO. The game is terrible until you until you get to there's a yeah. you know there's an early level you know whatever the ranking system is. You know, I, I, only thing I have to compare it to is is unfortunately. We have to compare it to World of Warcraft. Yeah. You know, until until you level, you know, 10, 12, 14, you know, it's it's almost, it's unplayable because you can't get out of the fucking beginner stages and do anything. Yeah. And, and then once you hit, like, level 20, you're off to the races because then you're able to do all the extra cool shit that, you know, that you get basically the whole game happens at level 20. Yeah. So, you know, and, and, and Destiny was no different than that. So I think that, I still stand by it. I think Destiny is going to have a lot of long a lot of longevity because there's a lot of gamers out there that have never really fully experienced an MMO because they never played a lot of PC gaming. Yeah. Well, and, not on, exactly on console. That's yeah. Some... And now that you have console gamers are getting, are getting into playing these MMOs, they're like, Oh, this is fucking cool. I, I personally like MMOs. And I, if I sat down and started playing destiny, I probably would thoroughly enjoy it. I just like giving, giving it shit because it pisses you off. Oh, it doesn't piss me off because I know that you like Destiny it. Destiny sucks. <laughs> it sucks. I find it funny because I don't know. It it did. It sucked me into the MMO world, but fuck, it obviously works. I mean, how much does World of Warcraft make? Fucking forty billion a year or some shit. Something obscene. Yeah. So it obviously works, but Bungie, fucking props to them for making one of the best franchises of all time, Halo, and then turning around and tricking everybody. And every time you would ask them, is it a first person shooter? They'd be like, eh, eh. Like, they wouldn't, they would never say, is it an MMO? Eh. It's its own genre. They tricked everybody. They tricked MMO players. They tricked first person shooter players. And they brought them all in on a console. And, like, if you're an MMO player, I think right away you'll probably like it because you already understand kind of what's going on, like you were saying. Yeah, there's a concept you have to understand. Yeah. But FPS players at first. I don't know. You already have. I mean, everyone already knows Bungie's fucking kick ass. Even if you hate Halo, you're still gonna give it a shot and you're gonna try it. And especially if you, because I'm guessing if you have Destiny, somebody told you to buy it and they tell you, "Oh, dude, just stick it out to like level eight, level fifteen, you know." So you'll be like, "Ah, oh, I'll try it. I'll try it." Because that's exactly what actually brought me back in. I just wanted to try Destiny. Tried it. it sucked at first, like you said, MMO style sucks ass. And my buddy's like, oh, dude, just keep trying it. When you get to, like, level 15 and towards 20, it's kick-ass. And he was right. So it, it fucking works. But you have to be tricky. I don't think Halo could pull off anything like that ever. I don't think well, they could trick the people into it. <laughs> well, the Halo is just a completely different style video game. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, granted, Destiny does have, you know, pieces of a first-person shooter. But, you know, the way the majority of first-person shooters work is you pretty much have enough material to be able to go against somebody that's much better than you you have all of the equipment you don't have the skill and you know at, at the end of the day you know it still takes you know four headshots and a body shot to put down a spartan it doesn't matter what you're you know no matter how good you are that's what it takes or how bad you are that's what it takes you know whereas with an mmo you know okay it takes two headshots for a level two and it takes 15 headshots for a level 30 you know, and that's that's the, really the big difference. And Halo would never be able to do anything like that because nobody, I don't think anybody would want to stick it out and and play a first person shooter on on that style of leveling system. No, I mean it's. I'll say one last thing and then we'll get off Destiny. Well, I'll get off on De Wait, I'll get off on Destiny. Moving on. <laughs> uh, no, we want to talk about. Let's talk. Uh, Trials Fusion. Did you play that? 
That came out 2014. I played the, I played the fuck out of Trials Fusion. I yeah. love all the Trials games. Oh, it, was it the best one yet? I think I think it was, but I don't know. Well, I liked it just because of the graphics, but I mean, it's just it's just a fun puzzle game. I mean, it's I did not like the fucking uh the moves and the backflips and shit. I didn't like it. I like I don't know. I wasn't into it. No, oh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I love Trials. I thought it was a great game. Uh, it was kick ass. Definitely, definitely in the top pigs pod list. Remember, no numbers. Yeah, definitely makes the list. I agree. Uh, <clears throat> clearing my throat. I'm trying to look like what other good games came out, but uh, I don't know. It was it was kind of a slow year. There wasn't. I mean that worked out again in Destiny's favor because when they came out, there wasn't hardly anything around them or after them other than like a Call of Duty, but... Yeah, we're not even going to talk about that. Yeah, that's not on the list. <laughs> if you're wondering right now... What's that? Uh, shit of Duty, Call of Shit. Call, call of Duty. There it is. I knew it was something about shit. Calling up on your duty. <laughs> uh, So that's not on there. I don't know. It was a thin year. Uh, I'm I'm trying to look. I'm looking at the list. I'm looking. Uh, the new about, the uh, Madden came out. The new one. It was okay. Yeah. I I it's it's just Madden. It, I I like Madden, but I view it kind of the same as Call of Duty. A money grab every single year, squeezing the shit out of that tit. Just yeah. <laughs> just getting all the fucking money out of it. What about uh? What about re-releases of games? Because I got one for you if you want to count it. Oh, there's a shit ton of re-releases this year. Yeah. Yeah, but I got the best. What? What is it? Yeah, the re-release for of uh, X Wing and X Wing versus Tie Fighter on the PC. I already knew before we started this episode. I knew you're gonna bring those up. Hell yeah, that's that that's that's a huge news. Those all count because they're fucking old games. It's not it like something that was two a, or three years ago. Yeah, it basically is a re It is a new release of video games because there's a huge population of gamers that's never fucking played it. Yeah, never have even heard of. Or weren't even or weren't even old enough to play it. Yeah. So yeah, I'm definitely counting those. Yeah, I'll, we'll count that. We'll count that. Uh, Sims Four, if you're into that, if you're into Sims, that's a lot like the Call of Duties and Madden. <clears throat> it's a lot. Yeah, it's a money squeezing teat, uh, squeezing the shit out of it. Uh, but uh, here, here, here's what we'll do. What we'll do. Uh, we will say our number one favorite games of the year, and I, I'm I bet you'll be surprised by mine, Q. <laughs> I bet you'd be surprised. Uh, oh, I, I would be completely blown away and shocked. I bet I'll never guess it. I bet you won't. Uh, let's see. Some other good games. Uh, fuck. I don't have a PlayStation, but Drive Club looked amazing. Fuck. I wish I had a PlayStation to play Drive Club. Have you seen Drive Club? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'm talking about Flight, Fight Club when I said Drive Club so many times. Oh, Drive Club. The first rule about Drive Club is you don't talk about Drive Club. Uh, but fuck, dude, the weather and the fuck, oh my god, the graphics that could, it's too bad that it had the same problems as, uh, Master Chief Collection and fucking sucked for a couple weeks. You couldn't do anything, it was glitchy, it deleted everyone's game saves and shit. It was bad. It, not as bad as Master Chief, but, I mean, I, we're, we're shitting a lot on Halo because so, I'm so disappointed in it, but honestly, Assassin's Creed Unity was the worst release of the year. It had, they literally updated 800, 900 fucking assets that didn't work, right? You couldn't do shit, Q. It was worse than Master Chief. Like, Master Chief, you could at least play like single player. You could play the campaigns. You could play uh, custom games, and those all worked fine. But Assassin's Creed, you, know, you couldn't do shit, Q. It was fucked. And I, I, it sucks that we're at this age now that it's just a release and patch. They don't fucking don't test games anymore. Well, they're they're doing stuff that's not too dissimilar from PC gaming because PC gaming's not that much different. You know, they release the game and then they have patch notes for the next two years. Yeah, but you gotta at least fucking test it before you release it. Yeah, that's what they have betas for. How the fuck can you press? Okay, they press discs, right? How do they, how do you before it goes anywhere near a disc? How do you not check that it at least has basic functionality? How the fuck does that get out? Like you're just like, yep, game's problem. done. Bye. See, the problem is, is they're they're testing it on their own equipment, and the, you know their equipment is set up to handle this particular program and these particular functions. So of course it's going to work fine on their stuff. 
but you know once it gets out into the wild and you know they haven't taken the time to check it on the other stuff i mean it's the same problems that you see in in uh pc gaming it's the same problem that you're starting to see in tablet gaming well, tablet know. and PC gaming makes sense because you have a fucking and mobile gaming because you have a fucking it's a huge variety of what the fuck the thing is going to play on. So stuff right. makes sense. I don't understand why they can't go buy a couple extra 20, 30 Xboxes and PS4s and plug them into regular internet like in another room. Don't plug them into your servers. That's not that fucking hard. Host like a little LAN party with your game. Uh, well, I think that the reason I really think that the reason why that's happening is because of the the the, the marketing deadlines. Yeah. You know the the marketing department already has the release date before the game's even finished. Yeah. So they're you know they're already pushing the product you know months before the game is even you know not even out of development and they're pushing the product. Look how many developers and publishers learned from that. So many games got pushed back this year that were supposed to come out this year. Fucking the order, uh, the division. Uh, I think they're dying learning, light. I think they're learning their lesson, but there was, you know, it, it was it was just like you know uh, Halo Four for E3. You know, a year before they were doing, you know, uh, they were showing video and whatnot and, and gameplay video from a video game that was a you know over a year from from release, and they're still pushing this. And you know, this game is coming up, but yeah, it's not coming out for another you know year and a half. Yeah, and that's I think that's one of their problems is you know it's so hard to there's there's so many different types of gaming out there that you have to you have to start pushing your product way early to kind of keep it in the forefront of everything else that's going on because the gamers are becoming more and more diverse they're playing on console they're playing on PC you know there's a huge there's a huge collection of gamers that are playing on console PC and tabletop yeah i think instead and i think they're coming around i don't know if they'll come around all the way but what they need to do is take a little reach around from indie developers and slow the fuck down on AAA titles, double A titles, whatever. The million dollars, the multi million dollar projects, slow the fuck down on those. Make sure they're perfect and fucking support indie development. Dude, there's fucking millions of games being made every year. And there's a lot of fucking good ones. Just support indie develop put the fucking I don't know why they don't have it anymore on uh as much anymore on the Xbox One arcade and indie development. It's really hard to find any, I guess just because the fucking UI sucks on Xbox One right now. Well, also I think it's because it's so new as well that there, there's still so so much functionality that hasn't been fully explored on the Xbox One yet that it's just going to take time. You know, it, it wasn't up until, what, maybe six, seven years ago that did the, the, the arcade and indie development for the 360 really blow up. I don't know if it was that. I, like five years ago. I think it took a few, three, four years to it really to blow up <clears throat> to where Microsoft was even putting up the money for indie developers to make games. Fucking Doritos. Doritos put up money for tons of indie developers. I'm sure you saw that Doritos challenge shit. Indie developers making games, but... Uh, I think that's the way to do it. I think slow slow down on your multi-million dollar projects. Quit rushing them through. You're going to be okay. You're going to make money. We're going to buy it if it works. A lot a lot of us... Shit, we're going to buy it if it doesn't work. Well, we will, but we'll take it back. I took back Assassin's Creed Unity. Traded it in for Destiny. Tell you that right now. <laughs> Best decision I made all year. <laughs> that's That's so sad. Oh, uh, Duck Dynasty came out 2004. No, I'm just kidding. Thank you. What a shitty game. <laughs> it it doesn't even it doesn't even rate me talking about it. Uh, the Evil Within, which I have you seen it? I, I don't think you've played Evil Within, have you? No, I know of it, but I haven't played it. That I think they spent more money on marketing it than they did developing it. And I'm not saying it's a bad game. I'm just saying again. This is one of those that's cool for maybe a month, but no long, not longevity, nothing to it. It's kind of stupid, gets boring, it's the same thing over and over again. Uh, dumb. Now here's your one. How about PT? Ooh, well technically, that's not out yet. Well, the... the, the You're talking about playable teaser Silent Hill game, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's that... Well, yeah, it's not out yet, but I guess that was technically a standalone game, because from I mean, what I understand, be. that's not in the game. That's just in engine. 
So I think it I think it should be on there, Re- regardless of whatever whatever genre or whatever classification you want to give it as as a video game. It was a standalone video game. Uh, yeah. Now, granted, it turned out at the end to be a you know a marketing tool a tool for something else. But I mean, goddamn, that was a fucking beautiful game. It definitely would count as like an indie game, even though it's not an indie game. It's made by a legit studio and stuff, but. Since it has like six to eight hours of playable game, oh god, easily. But oh, it's fuck. I haven't even played it, and I'm drooling over it. I I have a buddy that has a PS4 and won't let me borrow it <laughs> to play it. I'm, I, I'm gonna have to go I, to his house or something. That's what I did to play it, and it was just like this game is fucking epic. Uh, did you play it after our Halloween episode? Mm, yes. Yeah, after I drilled on it for fucking hours and told you you have to go play it. Well, I wanted to play it anyway because I watched uh, I watched Rooster Teeth do their their let's plays in it, and it was just. I mean, that's what turned me on to the game in the very beginning. So. Yeah, definitely that one. Uh, fun fact, real quick on that: Norman Reedus says they haven't filmed or recorded anything beyond that playable demo. He knows nothing about the game. They need to get on that shit, and they need to do a crossover for uh, th- uh, Xbox. It better be on it. They haven't said yet if it's only on PlayStation. Just the PT was on Sony, because Sony's throwing money left and right to people to give them exclusives, because they really want to beat Xbox. But I'll tell you what, as far as the numbers I've seen, Xbox is catching up. Xbox is doing really well since they lowered the price to three fifty. Well, that's the only way to do it. I mean, they've got to... For them to be a successful for in this day and age, I really think to be a successful console, you've got to be able to produce a quality console with quality software, quality hardware, and you've got to do it for less than three hundred and fifty bucks. You you just have to. And they can. I mean, they might lose a little bit of money, but you're gonna make all your money back on fucking other products. Fucking controllers that break all the time or are broken by rage gamers. Uh <laughs> well, I mean and you know they they take a they take a portion off the top of all the video game sales or all the production you know you know Xbox is making money off the video games themselves well they make you know, $60 a year from all of us for Xbox Live Q exactly and i mean they're making money hand over fist I, I really think that you know they should basically treat it like a cell phone you know you buy the cell phone for a penny and you spend 4 years paying an ungodly cell phone plan just so you you know you can use your phone so I really think that that's the way they need to do it. Yeah. Yeah, let's subsidize gaming. Yeah. There you go. Is that the million dollar idea? There it is. I think that's your million dollar idea right there. Subsidize gaming. And support fucking indie developers. I agree. Uh, I guess technically we could say uh, Grand Theft Auto was 2014 if we're talking next gen Grand Theft Auto. I think that... uh, First person mode Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. And yeah, you know, it's we're still waiting on heist. We get that, and uh, just you know, that's not coming. Pigs don't yeah. fly. But this this concept of the whole like first person play mode is it's fucking beautiful. It's it, that's all I have to say about it. It is absolutely gorgeous to play that video game. You know, because I remember the days of the top down scroller. You know, and now you're playing this thing in full blown first person. It's just fucking gorgeous. I love it. Gorgeous. Yeah, but I'm a I'm a fucking GTA fanboy and always will be. So did you know? Oh, well, I'm not positive. Uh, this is a rumor I heard, and I haven't. Again, we don't look shit up. We just roll with nope. it. <laughs> I heard in the next gen versions, and uh, that you can. This has to be wrong. That you can turn into animals and drive cars with them. That sounds like a mod. That has to be a mod like from a mod. Uh, GTA 4. Yeah, I, I I don't think that's GTA 5. Now that I'm thinking, it, that's got it very well. It very well could be GTA 5, but that doesn't mean it's not heavily modded to do it. Yeah, well, GTA 5 is not out on the PC yet. As soon as it is, then we'll get all the cool mods. Yeah. Well, for the PC version. Uh, here's one that I haven't played that I, even though I haven't played it, I'm gonna put it up on the honorable mentions. Uh, Far Cry 4. I never got into the Far Cry. Ooh, I heard this is the best one. Everything I've heard about it, everything I've seen on it, looks amazing. It looks like it looks like Skyrim. It looks like modern age Skyrim. Yeah, I have some uh, I have some friends that play Far Cry, and they're you know they basically you know turn the game on and jerk themselves off while they're playing it. So, uh, but now uh, 
Drum roll. Best game of the year, in my opinion. Uh, I'm gonna say it. You take. You can take a guess, Q. What do you think? What do you? What have I been drooling over? What have I put my finger up in the bum of? What do I love? What's my favorite mm. game of the year? God damn, you're gonna say Destiny, aren't you? No. Okay, good. <laughs> I'll tell you why. My favorite game of the year, and I specifically worded that the way I wanted to, my favorite game of the year, uh, Alien Isolation. I have not played that yet. I've been so I was so disheartened after Colonial Marines that Oh my god, dude. No. Don't But then again, I don't have next gen console, so I mean I can't. You can play I Isolation's on three sixty. Is it really? Well, then we might have to do something about that. And I'll tell you, one of the coolest features of it that I learned after playing it for like a month and a half is if you have a Kinect, which also works on 360, the Kinect will fucking track you and track your sounds and your movement, and that shit will fucking alert the alien, bro. No joke. That's that's awesome. So you got to, like, turn the lights off. You got to play. So, like, it encourages you if you have a Kinect connected. Uh, it c- encourages you to turn the fucking lights off, be quiet, like the way you should play a horror game, the way you should watch a horror movie, which this is kind of like a horror movie, but you're in it. Oh, dude, it's so fucking good. It's unbelievable. Like if, like if you told me, uh, I can only play one game for the next six months and I have to pick Destiny or Alien Isolation, uh, man, I would, uh, I would have to pick Alien Isolation because, it's okay when you think about it like you're in a ship and there's an alien chasing you around it seems it sounds like oh it's always the same thing but dude it's not it's never the same fucking thing there's always a different corner he comes around or he comes down from the ceiling or through the wall which i didn't even know he can grab you through the fucking wall but the other day i was playing and he grabbed me through the i was hiding in a locker and he put his hand through the back of the wall through the locker and fucking stabbed me and killed me but ah, oh, dude, it's so good. Every it's it's, I don't know. It's damn near perfect horror game, in my opinion. If the graphics were just fucking that much better on point, it would be the perfect horror game. But you don't even notice the graphics after a minute when you're fucking sweating your fucking balls off trying to avoid this dude. You need to play it. Go get it. Best game of the year, in my opinion. Better than Destiny, and you know how much I like Destiny. <laughs> no, I, I don't know anything about it. How do you feel about Destiny? <clears throat> it's all right. It's all right. Yeah, it's good, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you, What do you think, Q? What What's your best? I know you don't have an Xbox One yet, but even if well, you haven't played it, you know, what's your favorite? My My best game of the year is not a console game. So, and I I don't even I don't have to get like an official Pigs Pod ruling on on this. So, uh, my my best game of the year that I have played the fuck out of all year long as Warhammer 7th edition. Do you let that ha- let that roll? Warhammer's been around since 86, 87, but we- 7th edition came out in June. Let that ride. Isn't that a tabletop game? It is a tabletop game. Well, well huh. Tech- it's a re-release. It's a brand new game. You, you, <laughs> it, it's, it's a brand new game. You know, all the shit that happened in 6th edition, you can't do in 7th edition. Yes, you do have a point. That's how it works. Goes from six to seven. Uh, all right, we'll let that slide. We'll let just just this once. We'll let that slide. Tabletop. That's 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 my game of the year. I really wanted to use uh, I really wanted to use X Wing because I started playing it in like February of this year. Yeah. And then I realized that it came out in December of of twenty thirteen. So oh, uh, yeah. so close. Yeah, it was a Christmas release, so I was like, I guess I can't use it. Yeah. We'll we'll go with Warhammer Seventh Edition. All right. What's so great about it? Seventh Edition. I think Seventh Edition is the most balanced of all all of the, all of previous six. Ed- I started playing in Fifth Edition, uh-huh. so I haven't seen. I never saw anything from one through four, but from Fifth Edition to Sixth Edition now into Seventh Edition, I think it's the most balanced. I think they've spent six edition or uh, six editions, uh, like working out all the kinks and the bugs and. You know, trying to trying to take care of all of the assholes that are like, well, it doesn't say you can't do this, <laughs> you know. So you basically like all of the loopholes and bugs and glitches. Ninety nine percent of them, I think, are fixed. I think I think honestly, if you ever 
If you ever want to get into tabletop gaming and you wanted to get into Warhammer, this is the addition to get into because it's it's not it's not an easy game to learn. I mean, the rule book is like 300 pages. Oh my god! Um, yeah, it's stupid. But that being said, it's the it's 300 pages because it is so detailed and there's no room for like, well, it, I don't know what to do because it doesn't really tell me that I can or can't do this or that or, that or whatever. 300 pages? Let me let me, let me grab my rule book. It's right here. I don't I don't understand how you play a game that has a book 300 pages. It is I have the I have the 7th edition the hardback release. It's an 8.5 by 11 sheets. So, and the book is him returning pages. Uh, how do you how are you not always referencing the book then? <laughs> that you're, that's basically what you do. Uh, I was wrong. It's not 300 pages. It is 208. Oh, 208. Well, that's, that's 100 less. That's 33% less. <laughs> <clears throat> but I think that it's... I, I really do think it's the most... Uh, for anybody that does listen, that does play Warhammer or is interested in anything like that, I think that 7th edition is the most balanced. Uh, they, they've taken concepts uh, from other editions and refined them. Uh, certain... Certain aspects of the game have been separated out into its own sequence rather than, you know, uh, melding it in with other sequences. Uh, for example, um, you have you have certain characters and certain uh, certain models that have the ability to do psychic powers. And prior to seventh edition, uh, all of your psychic stuff was done during the shooting phase of the game. So it kind of got muddled in, you know, while I'm shooting at this guy, I've got to remember over here. My 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 psychic my psyker he's supposed to cast this ability or whatever the case is. But what they did for seventh edition is they took the psychic stuff out and they made it its own separate segment of the turn sequence. So you don't have to worry about whether you know does your psyker you know does he do this during this phase or that. They get its own uh, his own phase. I think it's uh, I think seventh edition Warhammer is the most balanced of all the editions that it, that have at least I've played and. You know, coming from fifth edition, um, it's a much more balanced game, and they're they're yeah, and they're they're looking at they're working really hard at taking all the various armies within the game, and really trying to balance them against all of the other armies. So you're not like you, you don't have this one army that's like way overpowered and stupid and broken. Yeah, you want um, you want the rock paper si scissors syndrome. Uh, honestly, that's really the truth of it. You want you want to be able to say, okay, I can, any any general can take any army, and if the general is good, the army is good. Whereas, you know, leading up to seventh edition and a lot of the you know the pre seventh edition armies, you know, there were armies that made bad players good and good players gods. Yeah. And now it doesn't. It it it. You just can't do that. You've got to you've got to be a good general to do any army, and then you still have to rely on your dice. Huh. But so. there's still there's still probably perks for like a. Like a way a, a play style, I'm sure there's like a preferred yeah, race or something. Well, it, it's yeah, that's very true. That depending on depending on how you like to play the game, if you like, um, if you like in your face, smashy, fuck you up in close combat, you know, there's there's an army for you. But if you don't like that play style and you want to just sit in the backfield and blow your opponent to smithereens, there's an army for you that does that. You know, so your play style really does reflect what army that you end up playing. Sounds like, like you're running a commercial. There's an army for you. There's an army for you, soldier. You like being up in people's fucking faces and smelling their bad breath? There's an army for you. Yeah, but you know, I I play, I play Chaos Space Marines, and you know, I play kind of a, a mid to a mid to close range army. I like to get close, shoot you up, and then charge in and fuck you up in close combat. Yeah, so you're an you're an aggressor. Yes, and you know, and there's. I think that with the way they've done this edition, I think that they've they've really taken into account all the different play styles and really made a, re a very balanced game. And the great part, like the number one reason why this game is my favorite game of the year, uh, hackers can't hack it. Ooh, but wait, you could tear a page out of the rule book. You you very well could, but the reprint uh, a couple pages. But the the rules of the game is you bring your rule book, I bring mine. So if our books don't match, you fucked up. Oh, or you fucked up. No, you fucked up. Why are you I'm accusing me? Your rule book doesn't match me. Because I'm the fucking best, that's why. <laughs> You're hack you, uh, did you hack your rule book? <laughs> no. 
Well, when they wait, you know what they need for that game? An app. An app, is that? an app that, no, listen, here's, here's your million dollar idea, whoever, who the fuck makes Warhammer? Games Workshop. Okay, Games Workshop. Go back to your Games Workshop and make an app where you use Siri if you're on iPhone or you use uh, Google Speak, whatever. Google, I don't know what the fuck Google calls it, but you talk on your phone and you, like when you have to ask a question or, so like it, it, so it's a database, but you ac- uh, access it by like asking the question. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Or you could even have it. Oh, dude, that'd be a ridiculously sophisticated. But if you could just like have your phone there, and it would just know what's going on, like all all your fucking, all your little what do you what do you call your little guys? Those are my models, my minis. Uh, your minis. All right, you have your little minis all synced up to the app, and it like tracks what's going on in the game and shit. That would be really badass. And I had all, like, your health and all that shit. I don't know how the game works. I'm just saying all that shit on your phone right there. You don't need that a fucking 200-page rule book. You don't need to carry all that extra shit with you. You could play. Uh, that's, that's where they make their money. Yeah. Well, get on it. There's your million-dollar idea for you, Games Workshop. Go to your Games Workshop and work on that app. I wouldn't be surprised if we have technology that could do that. I mean, it would it would make your models more expensive, but you know, the shit they already are. Yeah, so why not? Fuck, make them another make another twenty percent add on to that just to have a little Bluetooth device in your model. That would actually be really cool to be able to track all that, and uh, but it would, it would make games faster, wouldn't it? It seems like I, that would slow knows? you down hitting your rule book up all the time, but I don't know. Yeah, our games are usually between two and four hour long. Oh, man. That, you're but, not reading the rule book the whole time, are you? No. I mean, in my defense, it's like, all right, at the end of this turn, let's go have a cigarette. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're playing for 20 minutes and smoking for an hour and a half. That's about right. <laughs> That's bad for you, Q. It's the new year. You need to quit smoking for a couple days. Why? Sure, just a couple days. Just, you know, everyone else is doing it. You think I hate on Destiny with nicotine in my system. Take my nicotine away. Then I really hate on Destiny. <laughs> well, I'll give you a, I'll give you a coffee mug full of wine. Then you'll be all hey, right. Yeah, it works, man. You'll be smooth rider. Yeah, I was too lazy to go get me a bottle of wine. I'm 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 drinking a New Belgium fat tire. New Belgium fat what? That sounds like a wrestler name. Nope, it's a fat tire. It's an amber ale. If you if you have it in your locality, you need to drink it because it's one of the best beers ever. Huh, I don't like beer. Uh, we all have our faults. Well, I don't know. I like uh, whiskey. It's probably my thing. Well, over the New Year's, I did get to try that new, uh, that spiced rum Kraken. Then again? Seen, yeah, that oh, was actually really good. It was a lot, it was a lot stronger than I anticipated because we were mixing it up with Coke. Oh. And uh, it, it required a little bit more Coca-Cola than you would anticipate for a drink like that because... It was a little on the stout side, flavor wise. I mean, alcohol wise, it's you know, it's like half. It's yeah, it's the it's the equivalent of any other spice rum, maybe a little bit more. What do you mean? But just too much spice in their rum, kick yeah, you in the it, teeth. Yeah, it was a, it was a very strong flavor. Huh. And it it needed it needed a little bit more Coca Cola to kind of dull the dull the punch because it I think it was a little overdone. But I mean, it's that was kind of its that was kind of its selling point was it was a higher oomph drink but oomph I don't know what to call it but yeah it was good I liked it Spice Drum we pump you up yeah it was really good huh sounds good I don't know rum's okay I think whiskey's my thing I don't know I don't yeah, drink, I, I don't drink too much you know I did have a one of the best whiskeys I've ever had uh black velvet uh caramel mm that sounds really good black velvet roasted caramel it's freaking who that actually sounds really good. It, it is pretty good. You just drink it like that. You don't need Coke. Huh. All right. Well, so, uh, yeah. So what do you think? You think that's a, uh, think that's an episode? Yeah. And happy New Year to you. To you. you. <laughs> I'm going to contact Obama and be, that has to be the official song. He'll be like, <laughs> well, okay. Uh, what, uh, what, what we're going to do is, uh, that's not Obama. What the fuck is that? I don't know. I don't. I can't do an Obama accent. I can't either. Uh, so there you go. Back president. New year. 
He likes jokes. You like jokes. We like games. Stephen Hawking likes jokes. <laughs> I'm not sure if he does. You, you hear how sarcastically he laughs when you tell him a joke? He goes, ha, 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 ha. Fucking yeah, sarcastic, yeah. Stephen. <laughs> Fucking... <laughs> Oh, I love you, Stephen Hawking. I still haven't seen his documentary. That's my goal. I haven't either. That's my... Uh, That's your resolution? <laughs> resolution. I tell you what, I'll make that my resolution as well. You know, In the next 30 days, we have to watch the uh, documentary. Next 30 days, huh? 30 days. That's our resolution right there. 30 days. I got to contact Kim Jong-un and tell him to put that shit up on the internet for me. Cause I <laughs> Other than that, welcome to the new year, the new podcast. It's going to be a little different. I hope it sounds better. I hope this doesn't sound like a trash can. Like, we're just hanging out down with Oscar the Grouch. Hey, I just hope that everybody can hear me. If they can hear me, it's a good podcast. Yeah, well, Real Mystery said he enjoys your voice, so we're going to have to get him back on. Yeah, we need to do that. Well, yeah, we'll have to do that pretty soon. We'll do that this month. That's another resolution. I'm down for that. Let's see how many resolutions we can make and not break. Make them, don't break them. There you go. That's our episode right there. Make them, don't break them. <laughs> Uh, other than that, you need to, you need to make a resolution to clear your history always and forever. Clear your history. Never forget. I don't think that's what those ribbons are for, Q. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to make one. Oh, boy. Just tile it in boobies and say clear your history. <laughs> Never forget. <laughs> All right, now that we've offended everybody, okay, bye. Bye. Check me out, cloth on my fits me like a glove. Just put it a time. I'm